Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second TypePy Tech Talk. I'm Alex. I work for TypePy as customer success. Uh, quick notes about how this talk is going to work. First of all, big disclaimer. This talk is being recorded just so we can share this on our socials. What are we going to do today? So first, we'll do a quick presentation of the speakers that we have here, so Florian and Irv. Then I'll do a quick refresher on what is TypePy. It will be the same thing as uh, what we did in first tech talk, but I just want everyone to be on board on what type I is. So I'll go over this very fast. The next 30 minutes will be dedicated to Florian continuing his demo of creating a sales dashboard using type I, but this time he'll be focusing more on multiple pages, doing forecasting with type I and managing multiple users. And the last part will actually leave the floor to Irv, who's going to talk about his real life use case experience with type I and how type I helped him in his work at Princeton consultants. So without further ado, let's start by presenting ourselves. So I already said who I was, maybe Florian. Well, I also work for TaiPai and I am the community success engineer in TaiPai. So doing demos, working with R&D and uh, contributing to TaiPai in general. Perfect. And Irv? Hi, I'm uh, Irv Lustig. I'm the optimization principal at uh, Princeton Consultants. I lead our uh, sales and development efforts in many of our optimization and other AI-based applications here at Princeton. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here, by the way. All right, let's get into it. Quick refresher about TypePy for those of you who've never been around us. The problem we wanted to address when creating TypePy was the low success rate of data projects. So only 13% of data projects actually make it into the production stage. And this is extremely low when we take into account that most big companies have data projects, data analytics teams. So we want these projects to succeed. The main cause for that issue is talents. To have a successful data project, you don't only need a data scientist, but you also need a DevOps and a front-end guy, basically an IT team that's going to deploy your application, your algorithm, that's going to build a good-looking interface to interact with it. And either teams don't have all of these talents, they only have the data engineer, and then it doesn't work because you don't have an interface for your algorithm. Or you have all of these skills, but they're very separated. And what tends to happen is that data engineer is going to do his algorithm in his corner with blinders on. He's going to send that over to the IT team, who's going to send that over to the end user. Uh, the issue with that is you don't get any more communication between the end user and the data engineer and you get this tunnel vision effect. What we want at type I is for anyone who knows Python to be able to do all of these skills. This way, the data engineer can get feedback from his end user early on. So that's why we created type I. A big part of our product, so type I is a Python library that allows you to create web pages using only Python. So I will do a long demo about this. This is very useful in the sense that this allows you to deploy data analytics more easily. This reduces your tech stack to Python only. This way you don't need to have IT, someone who knows Angular in the team or React. You can deploy in anything in a few lines of code. Here I give a very simple example with 20 lines of code with a slider and a chart. And the main advantage of this is you get the end user faster in the loop. If you're a data engineer, as soon as you have an algorithm that's working, anything that's working, you put it within an interface that you've coded yourself and you send it to the end user to get feedback. Another big part of our product also focuses on data orchestration. We provide the Python library and we also provide tools uh, such as a VS Code extension to code these uh, graph-based pipelines for your data projects. This comes with a lot of functionalities. Uh, first of all, we provide pre-built uh, visual components to interact with those pipelines. So to change the inputs, to run the pipeline, to visualize the outputs. This once again puts the end user in the loop early because as soon as you have a pipeline that's working, you put it in a pre-built interface, you send it to the end user and you get feedback. Uh, we save and version every single one of your runs. This, this way you don't lose information. You can track APIs over time. You can compare different runs and it's easy to plug most common data sources that you have in your companies, whether it's AWS, Azure, or an SQL database, a CSV file, whatever. So that's why we created TypePy. That was the problem we wanted to address, its cause, and our solution, how we address it. Maybe quick last slides. 
So a quick example of a result that we've done with TypePy with a big French retailer called Intermarché. They had a data team that wanted to do a cash flow management app, but they considered that they didn't have the skills in-house to do this. So they outsourced it initially for 600K, eight months for people. They created this cash flow management app and we told them, well, your data team already knows Python. So that means they already know TypePy. And using TypePy, they managed to make an application that respected the same requirements using only 60K, two of their own people, and two months. So that's really the big leverage of TypePy. We use skills that you already have in-house, so it costs less and it takes less time. One last slide on our positioning. If you're familiar with Python, you're probably familiar with some of these tools on the screen. Uh, what we've noticed before creating TypePy is that in the Python graphical space, you have two poles. On the one side, you've got tools like Streamlit, which are very easy to use, but very oriented towards prototyping. As soon as you have 10 pages, 10 users, 10 charts, you have a large data set, you have a big model running in the background, these tools will fail because of their backend management. They will crash, they will freeze. On the other side, you've got tools like Plotly, which are scalable, but on the other end, they're very hard to get into. They have a steep learning curve. So what we did at TypeI is we saw the opportunity to create a tool that retains the ease of use of tools like Streamlit. This way, anyone who knows Python can learn them and get into them while focusing all of our efforts on performance. This way, even if you have the biggest app in the world with a, lot, a big model running in the background, you're plotting charts with a large data set in the background, TypePy still works. All right, that was my quick refresher on TypePy. I'm going to hand over to Florian in a few seconds. But before, uh, what is he going to do? So during the last Tech Talk, what we did it was a quick role play between Florian and I, where I am a manager at a big retail company in Asia. And I have multiple stores around Asia, around the country. I have a lot of data around my stores that's stored in CSV files or whatever, but I don't have any insights on what my stores are doing. So that's why I asked Florian, which is my data engineer, to create this quick dashboard where we have a few metrics, we have a map where I can see the performance of my stores, and we can see a lot of different metrics, sales by customer type, by city, et cetera, over time. That's what Florian did during the last Tech Talk, so I invite you to go take a look if you're interested. We also had a selector to interact with these charts. So that was really cool, but now uh, let's do what we're doing during this test talk. So this dashboard is very cool, but what I'd like now is forecasting capabilities. I want something. I know when my employees are going in holidays and I know how much that affects sales. So I want to create a forecasting pipeline that takes this into account and that allows me to play with the inputs and see how that affects my sales for the next two months. And I'm also going to need some user management because I don't want, I'm going to be sharing that dashboard everywhere in my office, in my team, but I don't want everyone to be able to modify data within the app. Uh, maybe only the data engineer should be able to do that. Maybe we should have roles so that people can only read uh, the dashboard. So Florian, uh, good luck. You have uh, 30 <laughs> minutes to do all of this. All of this, wow, okay. I will try my best. So I'm going to show you the application that we are going to build today. Uh, so in 30 minutes, we will be able to do this application. And then I'm going to show you what we have built so far in the last type of tech talk. Just a refresher for the one that were in the last type of tech talk and for the ones that are coming. So I think like it's like 50-50, so it would be great for, for everyone. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you what we aim to build at the end of this session. So I think now that you see my screen. So we want to create a multi-page application where you are visualizing a lot of different charts, different maps, where you can get some insights from your data and give some value to your data. So we add, um, we have a page about uh, another view of our data, like the total sales, average rating, a map that's showing me the sales of my different cities in Asia. We have another page about more like analysis. We have different charts, so bar charts here that will allow me to have a, a deep understanding of my data and on which I can also do like some kind of cross filtering, for example, with selectors. And I can really like have an interactive uh, way of, uh, of using and showing my data. And we will have the last page, a page about uh, predictions, where we're going to be able to create 
uh, scenarios. So a scenario is basically a run of some pipelines with inputs, and we're going to be able to create different scenarios with different inputs that's going to give different outputs. We're going to be able to visualize the predictions and like make some decisions upon it. So I'm going to show you all of this, how uh, to do that. But this is the uh, final like application that we're going to build. Now we have an application that looks like this. So we have in fact a single page dashboard. So no multi-page as all the things that we have done uh, yet are not the prediction. It's about the overview and the interaction with the data. So we have this inside of our application. This is our starting point and we are going to try to build an application, a multi-page application from it with the best practices. We're going to be able to integrate data inside TypePy to be able to create pipelines, create scenarios, being able to show the forecasting depending on scenarios. So trying to really use uh, the data and scenario management from TypePy and also show you like, you can create like a multi-page and multi-source application. So for the code, the code of this, I'm going to explain it a little bit just uh, before we try to do that. So this was the code of the last type of tech talk. What we have is different functions that's going to give me our different graphs. So these are functions that's going to give me graphs. We are using Plotly Python here in order to create different uh, Plotly charts. These Plotly charts are going to be integrated into TypePy inside our page. So these are all of our different figures that we're going to put inside our, our page. Here are our different figures and a callback that's going to change those figures depending on the selector. So I had like selectors on my analysis page. These selectors are going to change my charts. So this is what you see exactly here. This is the callback that is called when I am changing my selector. Changing my selector will call this function that will update my charts. And this is our entire page. So CLC Insights, we have our, our different KPIs uh, that we have inside our, our application. I'm going to, we have uh, a chart, like a chart in different columns. We have our selector to select our different cities. And then the final layout. So this is exactly this application with the map, the different charts, uh, the selector, and so on and so on. So we're going to transform this application into a multi-page application. To do that, it's really simple. I'm going to do it in like two minutes. And then I'm going to show you a proper way. If you want to build a robust like application, uh, like a true project, it will be something a bit like, uh, we're going to use the proper tools to do that. So how can I create my application with multi-page? So what you see here is that I have put all my different visual elements inside a type by page. This is what you see here with the width, with tgb.page as page. I'm putting all my different visual elements inside this page. And right now, this is not what I want to do. I want to separate these different pages. So what we're going to do is create two pages, overview and analysis. And we're also going to create a root page. If we go back to the final application that we want to build, it's going to look something like this, three pages. But as you can see, I have some common uh, visual elements, common KPIs here that's always staying inside my page. This is in fact the root page. The root page is common to every page that you have in your application. So we're going to have a root page and two pages overview and analysis and the prediction page we're going to create it later. So let's do that. I'm going to create a root page with my different KPIs. So this is this, says inside my KPIs. Then I want to create here. So I'm going to call it root page. Here it will be a second page. This page will be called, so it will be overview. I'm going to call it like this, overview. And then we're going to have a second page called analysis. So this is this one. I can even put on the other one, the name overview here as a title. And here, so we have an overview page. So I have created three pages here just by creating new with like tgb.page with different names. Oh, sorry, so overview and here analysis. Also, in order to navigate between different pages, I need what we call a navbar. Navbar. So it's a navbar visual elements. This will create visual elements to change my pages. So navbar. And then only we will be good to go. The problem here is that I have just one page and I need to configure it. So what I'm going to do just is create a, a dictionary of my pages. So the root page is designed with this symbol. It means that it is going to be my root page. Then I want the overview page and I want then to have analysis page. So it is a dictionary of my different pages and these pages as a dictionary, I'm going to put it inside the GUI. So the GUI 
is where you create uh, your graphical user interface. And then I'm going to run this GUI. So let's start again. I'm going to run my Python file. I've created my two pages, the root page, putting it inside the dictionary, putting also a visual element in order to change my page. And now I'm going to run my application. So this is what you see here. I have the root page. I have the nav bar, this visual element to change pages. And now I have also like this overview page. And if I click here on analysis, it's going to change. And then I have my analysis page. So yeah, we have created our multi-page application. Very, very simple, but it has some problem. This problem will just be if you have a big project, that's going to be a mess if you have everything in just one place, in just one script. So this is why we are going to be like to try to create a true application, like a true project with different folders where we're going to put our pages in. This is what I try to uh, show in this PowerPoint. So, okay, slideshow, yeah. So we're going to organize our pages in order to be easy to separate the different logics of the different pages uh, to like also navigate like in an easier way in our application to not be messy like to have the best practices uh, in mind so I, i've done like some kind of, of graph so this is our application in our application now we just have like a root page so with a go common kpi and two real pages overview and analysis so as you see here overview and analysis are good pages this uh as you see on the left i'm going to talk about it later but we're going to need algos and config later to integrate data to create pipelines around my Python functions that I have. Like I will show you some uh, second learn models that I'm going to use to create my predictions. I'm going to integrate these functions inside TypePy, give them like a superpower, like uh, I will be able to uh, run them in parallel. I will be able to keep track of the changes of my data. Uh, I will be able to run different scenarios, different pipelines and so on and so on. But this will be for, for, for later. But I want to be able to create uh, the best practices in order to create my, uh, my project. To do that, we have a command line interface where you are able to create a, a template, like a scaffolding system that will create like your scaffolding of your application directly with this command line interface. And this will look like something like this with your pages, your algos, and your config. It's going to create you all the folders that you need for a real application using TypePy. So how to use this uh, scaffolding system. So like I said, well, we need to use the command interface of TypePy. I don't know if you knew it, but we have like a CLI where you can have like TypePy run main.py, these kind of things. And the, fun like the, the option that we want to use here is TypePy create. So we're going to create a project using TypePy. So TypePy create template. So we want to use a template and we want to use the default one that was going to scaffold my entire application. So I'm going to click here. Now it's going to give me some different uh, questions. So what's well, going to be the root folder name? I don't really care. I want main.py, great. This will be sales uh, template, the name of my application, for example. Okay, pages, page names in the page application. So we have uh, analysis overview, but we're also going to have prediction at the end. So I'm going to write it also. So overview, we have analysis, right? And prediction. Maybe with us, I don't remember, we'll see. Okay, also do I want to use the scenario management and version management of TypePy? So which means how to create pipelines, how to integrate data easily in TypePy, uh, to keep track of these changes, uh, to be able to use parallelism, these kind of things in TypePy. Well, I want to do that uh, later. So I'm going to say yes. And the REST API with TypePy, no. Okay, so I'm going to enter this, the folder that, I've, that has been created, and now, I'm going to open it. So this is what I was talking about before. It's creating me an entire application from scratch, like with this kind of scaffolding system. And now I have to put the pages that I want in the correct folders. So the main.py looks something like this, kind of what I have done just before. Dictionary of pages, and then running my pages. I have algo and configuration. It will be for better, for later, sorry. Algorithm is going to be like my function that I'm going to use in my pipelines, configuration. So I'm, I'm going to configure these functions and how I want to integrate data into my application. And this is where it is interesting for us here. This is uh, how to create my pages. So we have a folder called pages in it, or three pages, analysis, overview, and prediction. And you have to put the specific code of your page inside the Python script here. So you put the page that you want, uh, another view, and so on, so on. So I'm going to do it now. 
For example, what I'm going to do is uh, this code. So my entire code that I had before, I'm going to go back. So it's not, yeah, it's this one. I'm going to do that. Okay. And nice. And up, 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 up. So I've put all my entire code. And this is normally what you shouldn't do just for demo sex. Demo. Uh, okay. okay. Um, so now it's good. And I have like my three pages. So my three pages, I should put them inside the code folders. For example, overview will be in the overview script. Well, this is analysis, for example, here. So up, analysis, I'm going to put that here. I have to import um, type by grid builder, obviously, and all the different uh, packages that is needed inside uh, this, uh, this page. Then I can do uh, the same thing with overview, putting overview inside this Python script. Same thing, you need the type by grid builder, but no worries. And same thing here. I have to put it inside the root page, which is here. So like this, I'm putting my different code in different folders, in different scripts, in order to be then easier to create different logics for different pages, to be able to know where I'm going to put my variables. Like it's really easier way to organize your code. So I'm really, if you're using like a multi-page application, if you want to create one, use uh, this kind of templates. So I'm going to close it and show you what it's look like when you're doing it properly. It will be uh, this way. So my different pages, so the root has nothing here, but for example, this one, this one, I've put my different functions was going to create me my charts for my page, creating the variables that I'm going to use inside my page and the page. Same thing for analysis, the data, the callbacks, the page. And like that, I create my application. Importing everything here is done for you normally, so you don't have to do anything and you can use uh, this template. So now we have created our multi-page application. We have used the best practices to do it. So now it's organized and it's great for the project. Now the next step is to integrate data inside Dibai, to use our functions in order to create predictions, to have some what if analysis. So create different pipelines with different inputs, that's going to give me different outputs. So to show you uh, what I mean by all of this, uh, I'm going to do a demo of the application here. So this is the prediction page where uh, we will see the different inputs and outputs. My use case here is that I have a data set where I have my holidays of my employees. In fact, I have different data sets of this because I don't know yet what I want to, to use for the holidays of my employees. And this will help me in my decisions to allow uh, holidays and uh, to change the different inputs. So I'm creating a scenario. This first scenario will say that there's a lot of employees that's going to take holidays and that um, these holidays will have a big impact on my predictions. So I'm going to click on create when selecting my holidays. And this is the page that I see. I have two inputs inside my pipelines. I have one about how uh, all this is going to impact my predictions. Like I said, I think it's going to impact a lot. And then I can upload a CSV of uh, the holidays of my employee. So it has the different names of my employees, then the holidays that they are taking. Like I have 60 days of if they are taking or not um, vacation. So we have all of this. And we have our data. Now that I have loaded it, I have um, all my data here. So what you don't know now is that this is in fact a data viewer. This is a way to uh, see the backend of TypeI, uh, to see a data node uh, that we have in TypeI. So it's not just like a CSV. In fact, it has more properties than just a CSV and a table. It is a way to change your data, to visualize it, to see properties like metadata on your data, and to see the history of what has been changed uh, on this. For example, there have been three changes on this CSV, on this uh, data node. So one, one minute before, like, uh, and two minutes ago, I have done like uh, changes on my data. So, okay, maybe I also want to change if and here it's not an holiday. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to up. So now I have changed my data. We're going to see in the story that it has been changed. So it's really powerful. You can really keep track of the changes that, uh, that has happened on your data. Okay, so I have my different inputs uh, good for uh, my predictions. So what I'm going to do is run my pipeline. So my scenario with this two minutes. These two missions will train uh, two different models. Then it's going to do some forecasting. These forecasting are going to be uh, concatenated and I'm going to have my results at the end. So all of this uh, here, so maybe we can see the different logs uh, appearing somewhere. 
yeah, prediction ready. So with different logs, like with different shows, that has been talked about by IR, the training and so on and so on. Okay. So now I'm going to do like another scenario and then I will show you the, 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 the results. So all day low, same thing. It's not going to have a big impact. This year I want, um, okay, to have a low impact now. So it's going to be another data set with another data and I'm going to submit it. Okay. So we have to wait a bit for the predictions and then I'm going to show you uh, these predictions. While we're waiting on this, uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do now. So like I said, I had like algo and configuration, two different folders that we haven't explored yet. So algos is where I'm going to put my functions, my Python functions that I've created uh, for my project. So for example, it would, could be like preprocessing pipelines. It can be like ETL pipelines. Uh, here I will use uh, different algorithms that I've created um, for uh, for this project. I'm going to use an Arima model, an XJBoost model, and it's going to give me like uh, predictions. So these are going to be my, my different functions. And the configuration is uh, how I'm going to configure these functions, how I'm going to configure the integration of uh, my data inside TypePy. So we'll be able to do like to create pipelines graphically or with Python. And when this configuration is done, I'm going to be able to use this configuration uh, to create these visual elements that you have seen, like this scenario selector, where I'm able to create scenarios, uh, the other one where I'm able to show my data, the other one that's going to, for, to, to let me uh, submit my pipeline. So let's do that. I'm going to go here. Okay, a day low. Okay, so we see here, for example, it's loading. So we see here, this is our predictions. So it's a huge, huge data with my Arima data, like predictions, XJBoost predictions. Uh, we have also a view here. So in fact, like everything here is done by TypePy. Like I haven't uh, created anything for this, but I will show you show you uh, that uh, later. These are my historical data. And these are my predictions for the input that I've given uh, it. So changing the level, uh, putting a data set is giving me this as a predictions for my sales on the upcoming uh, two months. I can go to holiday uh, low and it's going to show me different predictions here. These are two different predictions. And if I want, I can like create another page where I'm able to compare these predictions and know which one I want to use uh, and uh, build a decision upon it. Okay, great. So I'm going to explain to you how you can create this page. So I'm going to go from basics I will skim subcode and show you the result and explain to you how uh, this result is achieved. So going back here. So like I said, I have some uh, algorithms. These are like Python functions that I've created for my project. It's about training Arima. It's about uh, preprocessing. This is a normal Python functions, but we're going to use them inside TypePy to give them a lot of uh, like features. So, so we're going to be able like to skip tasks if they are redundant. We're going to be able to, uh, sorry, to uh, parallelize uh, different tasks, different pipelines, and so on and so on. Okay. So these are my functions, and these are the configuration of my functions. Okay. So basically, what you see here is my pipeline that is behind my application. As you can see, it's like it's kind of like complex, but it is in fact uh, pretty easy to understand. Like we have. A preprocessing uh, phase, we have a training phase and a forecasting phase, and then we can connect the results. So the orange boxes that you see is what we call task. Task are the functions that I have defined in algorithms. For example, uh, this is my preprocessing uh, function. This is my training of Arima. You can see it here. It is my train Arima function. This is my XJBoost uh, train uh, function, and this is the forecasting. It's just functions like Python functions that you have created for your project. We're going to be able to embody, like uh, to, to put like a framework around it with the task. Then uh, this function have different inputs, different data inputs, different data outputs, and we're going to modelize them with data node. So for example, uh, we have as the input of a preprocess, three data nodes. We have initial data, holiday and level, and these data nodes are just a pointer to your data. It's not the actual data, it's kind of a pointer. For example, if I click here, insert data, it's a CSV with some path. This is the data that I want to integrate into TypeI. And I just have to specify this in order to integrate it. Holiday and level are, um, in fact, UI elements, like level was my slider and holiday was the CSV file that I'm putting inside my data. So when you are done with your configuration, you can use this configuration inside TypeI to be able to have 
all the features uh, that comes with it. So a way to integrate data, to keep track of the changes that you have done to your data, create multiple pipelines, being, being able to compare your pipelines. Over time, uh, you can also like compare your KPIs if you are like uh, getting better or worse, it's kind of things um, done with this. So let's go. Um, this is my page that is as now nothing. Well, yeah, some stuff, but I am going to, you should have something like this. So nothing in your page and here. So in fact, like before, like in the last type of talk, I have used the type agree builder to create my pages. Here we're going to use the banner syntax, but it's the same. What I want to do is to be able to create um, scenarios. So I'm going to create like a viable scenario. Then I will want to be able to uh, select data node in order to view it and to change it, to display it and so on and so on. So I'm going to create select data node. Was none. It's a way to initialize them. Now it's done. I'm going to use a uh, Greek core visual elements in order to expose them. So the first visual element that we're going to use that is specific to the scenario data management of TypeI is the scenario selector. It's a way to create scenarios and to select them. So this is the binding mechanism of TypeI. You have like a selected scenario here. Sorry about that. Here I'm going to create like a scenario selector. Here there's another visual element called scenario like it's a scenario viewer. It was the one where I was able to submit my scenario. Then we can create a data node selector. So the variable that is binded to it is data node. So it is called a data node selector. And I want them to be able to uh, select uh, my, uh, like to select my data node and then to show it. Okay. Uh, just, I wanted to, to go back on something a bit. Like I have a graph here. So in fact, this graph, is an editor. Like it is not just something to visualize my pipelines. I can create my data node here. I can uh, create my task. I can do anything here to configure my application. That's just one way to do it. Otherwise you can also use uh, the Python API, like same thing. You want to configure your data nodes. So how you integrate data inside the API, uh, configure your data node. And you have some uh, different parameters that you can pull. This is a CSV, that's some path and so on and so on. You create your task in Python. So either with a graphical interface using a VS Code extension called Type Studio or in Python. Okay, I a bit like forgot it, but let's go back to this. So I have my different visual elements. I can go in my main.py and run this, and we're going to see uh, what's behind it. So I have my application and go back to, I go to prediction. And here, as you can see, I have a button add scenario. This is my scenario selector. I can create holiday I, just like before, create, can go here. I can submit my pipeline. So going to create the, the, the different jobs needed to do the different tasks, pre-processing, the training, the forecasting, the, the concatenation. It's going to give me the results. And then I can explore my pipeline here, like my data, sorry, inside here. So for example, the result, the one that I shown before is this one. And I can show uh, here uh, my Ironman predictions, for example, or XJBoost or uh, Total. And I can create different traces uh, and so on and so on to create my charts. So it, it's really like basic, the, the basic uh, way to create uh, your application, uh, but it's working. You have created your pipelines, your configuration, and now you can directly create scenarios, uh, view your data and explore it and see all the story of your data and so on and so on. Um, so I'm going to go fast because I don't think we have a lot of times, so, but uh, if you want to create the application that I've built before, this is in fact, using the same uh, like uh, features, the same uh, basic um, understanding, but I'm creating something a bit uh, more uh, complex uh, and more like uh, something that you will show for your end user. So the Python script is this and the, pre, uh, the markdown code is this. So I'm just going to explain the, only, like, uh, the inputs. I have a slider, I have a file selector. The slider is going to change the level uh, on which like uh, but it's going to impact my predictions. When I'm going to change my slider, it's going to call this function. Same thing for the file selector. I have a file selector, I'm putting a CSV file in it. It's going to call this function. Then I have my scenario viewer, like before, and my data node viewer as before. So what happens when I'm going to change uh, my uh, my level or I'm putting a file inside my file selector? It's calling this function, which is writing inside my data node. So state.selected scenario is the one that I'm selecting right now, dot level is my data node, that's right, I'm writing inside my data node. Same thing as holiday, I'm writing my data inside my data node. This is a way to just uh, know what is happening uh, beneath, like uh, behind the scenes, 
in Taipei uh, like this new management. When you are executing a pipeline, you can use this function to um, have uh, what's happening inside your pipelines. So this function is a callback of this on submission change of your scenario viewer. So I'm creating all of this, uh, like uh, different things. And okay, the unchange is just, I have a data node selector. When I'm going to change it, it's going to change uh, my different charts. But basically what we have done so far, uh, like it is creating some kind of something like that. A slider is going to call a function that's going to change your data node. Same thing as here. This is a data node viewer. This is a scenario viewer, a data node viewer and you have uh, what you need. So Alexandre, you want to have uh, authorization and authentication, right? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. No, the goal of this is, thanks a lot for showing all of this. The good thing about what he's just shown is in a few minutes, you have an interface where you've got a prediction pipeline running in the background, where I can already play around uh, with the holidays of my employees and see how this affects my sales. The thing I would like now is I want to share this around the whole with the whole team and i don't want necessarily everyone to be able to play around with the settings or create new scenarios maybe i want some people to only be able to look at them so florian please do this so in type enterprise we have a way to do authentication and authorization so here i have a login system so i have a username i have a password i'm going to use this username and password um, and i have attached to my profile an admin role so here in my application, I can do anything. I can create scenarios. I can change my parameters. I can put like another data and submit my scenario. I can do anything I want here inside my application. Also, I have created another page called admin. If I go to this page admin, I'm able to view all my scenarios and my data node and so on. Like I can have a lot of things on my admin page. Because I am admin, I have like a lot of uh, privileges and I can uh, choose what buttons I can click on and so on and so on. So this is like the view of the end page. Can you uh, show your view, Alexandre? Can you uh, have this scenario, the same thing? Sure, let me, I was answering to someone. Yeah, so um, Florian has shown his side of the application, but here's what my side looks like. So uh, let's say I just logged in from my side with Alexandre's username and my password, I logged in. And that's what I can see from my side. I can see the results of his predictions. So I can see his holiday prediction results, but I can't interact with the level. I can't interact with this. If I try to add a new scenario, so let's say all either low, it tells me that I don't have the permissions to do this. And if I try to reach the admin page, it tells me you must be logged in to access admin. So here I would need Florian's permission. That's a quick look on uh, how we manage user permissions within TypeI. I'll give you back the screen. Well, I think uh, we're good. We have seen how to create all multi-page application, how to integrate data inside TypeI, create pipelines, do what if analysis, have uh, like a real end user using this data, creating his predictions and being able to like have some kind of decision support for, uh, on his application. And then authentication and authorization, that's kind of like vital for a lot of companies. Like I have different roles inside an application is kind of vital. So I'm not showing the code here, but uh, it is uh, open source uh, for everything that I've shown. So maybe you have something to tell. Thanks a lot, Florian, for all this work. I hope Welcome. it was uh, insightful for the people in this talk. And now we're going to move on to Irv, who's actually worked with SciPy in a real work environment. And Irv, the floor is yours. Tell us how was your experience with SciPy when you used it in a real use case. Okay, so let me get my uh, thing up here to share my screen. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to give experience with TyPy uh, that we've had here at Princeton Consultants. Our firm uh, develops uh, applications and AI, uh, in particular in, in optimization, which is an area of AI for uh, helping people make the best usage of limited resources. So I am going to talk about a story about a client. It, due to confidentiality, you'll see a lot of things I can't say. But basically what they were asking us to do is to solve a task scheduling problem. And you think of each of these tasks, which actually last many days, sometimes a month, sometimes over a year, but it's measured in days. And each one of these tasks has a manager and they have some people work with, working for them. And the manager will say, this task needs three people and this task needs two people, this one needs four people. And they want to limit at any particular time 
the total burden of work when you add up the people that are assigned to all the tasks that uh, can happen and come up with a schedule that will be as short as possible. Um, so they routinely conduct these tasks, but because they have limited personnel, the scheduling of these tasks to make sure they're done in a timely fashion can be difficult. Uh, so we developed an optimization model application that would uh, to help generate these schedules that will use all available ongoing and future tasks. And we use TyPy to help the client understand how we were progressing in the development of the application and to actually see the results. So our project was developed using an agile methodology. Our sprints were three weeks long. Uh, the requirements, as is usual, it happens in Agile, continue to evolve. They might change some of the requirements and the kinds of constraints, but also some of the data that would be required to represent these constraints. And so using TyPy, we created a user interface that allowed viewing of what we call the enterprise data. So there was some data that came from systems, namely the set of tasks came from an enterprise system with how many people were required, although they could override that, who were the managers of those tasks and other properties of the tasks, but also the ability to edit constraints data to say, hey, as a manager, I only wanna allow my people to have three simultaneous tasks at once. They could also launch an optimization to create a new schedule and visualize the results. And then we also created the ability to doing scenario management. Uh, this predated some of the controls that you saw uh, Florian showing uh, so we had to kind of build our own scenario management, but it also had to link back to a database that every scenario and all the data associated with it needed to be stored in the database that allowed us to do analysis and also uh, create an archive of all the runs that the client was doing. So uh, this is a, the basic screen. You're going to see a lot of these redacted things because I cannot talk about the specific application. Um, but over here on the left, we have a menu that lets the user choose between enterprise data, constraint data, and and scenarios or so solving, the scheduling, okay? So here you've you created a scenario when you pop up and you can select which scenario you want in a menu. You get information about that scenario as to when it was created. When was the last time that scenario contained data that was pulled from the enterprise? The last time it was saved and the last time that it was optimized. And then users have some buttons that allow them to rename the scenarios, make copies. So sometimes you start with the scenario, make a copy, give it a new name and edit the data, or you can delete a scenario as well. In the uh, Here in the enterprise data, there's a menu over here that I had to redact that has a list of all the different tables that they can show. And when you click this pull enterprise data button, that's when it pulls data from the external enterprise data into our system. Um, these settings here, we use uh, ability to set some dates, which is a data input, and whether we're doing some simulation basically to, to test an annual scheduling when we were developing this in the summer of 2023, we needed to say, let's pretend it's 2022 and we're doing the 2023 schedule. Over here in the bottom, you see that we use tables. Um, this data is not editable because it's enterprise data that is edited via other systems that exist at the client. But we have different columns that explain the IDs of the different tasks, what group and subgroup it belongs to, and some other information, and whether it was a new task that had been added since the last time we did a poll. We also did some pop-up editing for different data details. So in the case of constraint data, you would have, you're able to link tasks and indicate that these tasks have to begin either on the same day or within a certain number of days of each other. So here, in the back table, you can see like a task one and there's a second task and how many days are in between the tasks um, and whether, uh, I don't remember exactly what this column was, but it had a, we have a toggle there in case whether it's yes or no. Um, and so, and then when you wanna add a new task, you click the plus button that's over here on the left, it pops up the screen. It's a dialogue in the TyPy world and we indicate uh, you search for which tasks you want to link, and you get a drop-down menu that allows you to then find the task of interest. Uh, we are talking about things that have around a thousand tasks, um, and then you can enter the number of days. You say create a link, and it adds a row to this table. So we have a variety of different kinds of constraints that the users can edit, and this is saved in our local database for our application, which is separate from the enterprise data. But when you optimize, you then get uh, Gantt charts, which we all did with Plotly, and this predates the Plotly uh, features that they've added with version 3 in TyPy. So over here at the top, we have basically the schedule for a particular manager. 
we see that when they were scheduling, some of the tasks cannot be moved. You can't change a task that's already been scheduled. If you're when you're scheduling, say, in the, at the end of 2023, you anything behind you is is fixed, but you can move some of the tasks. The ones that are in green were moved, and the ones that were in blue were ones that were scheduled, but we didn't change it when we created the new schedule. And then at the bottom, you see your resource utilization. So for the manager. He's got a certain number of people, say he has five people, some tasks take two, some takes three. So this is the total burden for that manager over time. And he is allowing a total of 34 total assignments at any one time. So you can see we're not violating that particular constraint. So what are some of the benefits we obtained by using TyPy? One key was that we were really able to rapidly develop prototype screens that allowed us to demonstrate that we were handling the capabilities that were required in each sprint. We imported data from the enterprise system. Did we import the correct data? Was it the data they were expecting to see? Sometimes we'd import the data and they'd say, oh, I need to see this additional field. We have to modify some database scripts, pull it from the enterprise, easy to add it to a table, and it would automatically appear. We didn't have to change any of the UI code. Um, this also allowed our client to test our features as they were developed. So as we added more features and more screens and constraint editing or eventually the optimization, they could start testing it by themselves and, and see what they were able to do. In a decision support application like this, scenario management is really critical. So it allows the users to compare different results so, for example, if you change the constraint and said, well, this manager is allowed to have five simultaneous tasks among his team versus four, they could then see what the differences in the schedule would be. It also allowed us to have an audit trail so we could go back. We would be saving all the enterprise pulls as well as the constraint data that was edited. And we could go back and say, if they said, hey, I tried to solve my scenario XYZ, we can go into the database, pull XYZ, and just look and see what was happening in the optimization. Now, it turned out we wanted to use this UI in the final application, but the client actually chose to implement their own UI on top of our TyPy based application. And so our backend stuff that was doing the optimizations, everything's in pure Python, things that were managing the data and pulling the data, all of that was reusable. And we had to create a simple REST API that worked with their Angular implementation. And the reason they had to do that was they had some user interface standards that had to, that were very, very specific that they wanted to be able to control and use their own widgets in, in Angular, et cetera. But what happened here is that they were always four to six weeks behind us because we could implement a new column or a new table in a few lines of code, and that would take them three or four days to do. Um, so we this was a real advantage of us being able to use TyPy and show them that we were giving them all the facilities they needed in their actual application. Well, thanks a lot, Irv. I, I know there was a lot of redacting you had to do, but it's great to see type I use in a real life use case and see that what we're actually doing is useful. And thanks for uh, putting these bullet points out there of what were your biggest advantages of using a project such as ours. And thanks for crumbing as well, because, because it takes time. And so we're mostly done with the talk. We're probably going to stay on a few minutes to answer questions. Irv, if you have to go, I know we've reached uh, the one hour. No, I, I, I can stay to answer any questions. Uh, maybe one last thing before you go. Uh, I want to advertise the next tech talk quickly. So the next tech talk, let me share the link in the chat, will be about Type I Designer, which is a new feature we're going to be releasing. So I'm putting the link to the next tech talk in the chat, and I'm going to do a quick showcase of it right now. Quick demo of what we're going to be showing in the next talk. The next talk will be all about TypeI Designer, which is a new feature we're going to release in TypeI Enterprise, where instead of coding interfaces the way Florian Jacta did, what we'll be doing is coding interfaces by only doing drag and drop of widgets onto a screen. And using this feature, this will allow you to do very complex application where you can look around and see all the bike sharing stations around Paris and select them on the map and get more insights on them. So that's going to be the topic of the next talk. Thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact us on Discord. So the link is in the chat. Uh, Florian and I are very active on there. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you. See you next time. Next Tech Talk. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.